Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story comes from Am I the Arsehole Here? That says, Am I the Arsehole Here? Because I call my psycho ex's unrelated child my naughter. Buckle up. 15 years ago, I was 25 and was finishing my contract and my then girlfriend of three years, Natalie, was acting increasingly strange. I came back from a two month assignment and was prepared to break up with Natalie. She came by and gave me the good news. She was pregnant. I asked how far along she was. She said five weeks, so I broke it off with her and told her she needed to do better at math. She refused the breakup and insisted the baby was mine. So I told her the following. Number one, paternity test. And two, if the child was mine, we can talk about financial support and custody arrangements with lawyers. She refused both and told everyone we both knew that I was a deadbeat for knocking her up and leaving her. I told everyone I was on a two-month assignment when she conceived, but a few insisted for the sake of decency, I house her and give her limited support. I consulted a lawyer about this mess and the lawyer made it very, very clear that any overt support I give could be seen as me taking responsibility. So I told these friends that and most dropped it, except one guy who again insisted that charity couldn't be used as a legal culture like that. I told him if he believes that, he can house her. He agreed to drop it after that. Child was born and not even going to go into the whole she didn't look like me because most babies are born with squished faces. And all I saw were the pics she sent me with messages like, Emma wants to know where daddy is and shit. She still refused to take any paternity tests, but constantly showing up with that baby got to the point where I filed for a restraining order. Fun fact. In my state, a permanent restraining order is not, in fact, permanent. It is two fucking years long. The only way to get it longer is if there was a violent crime associated. And apparently bugging someone with a baby that's not theirs is not a violent crime. So my life for the last 14 years was me renewing the restraining order every two because once it clears, Natalie shows up again with not my child. I did eventually find a nice girl get married and now I have a nine-year-old son, Henry. My wife Kim is well aware of Natalie and Emma. When the cycle begins again, I always say the same thing. One, paternity test. Two, once paternity is proven, I will take custody and get financial support set up. Natalie always refuses and says both are insulting. Recently, the cycle started again and this time Emma showed up first. She approached my son during a school event visit to the zoo and said hi i'm your big sister emma henry knows about stranger danger and ran away to a teacher i had to have a very very painful talk to the teachers and parents that were at the event about my relationship with emma and natalie now emma was never my daughter i even called her my naughter once or twice in the conversation after the group disbanded one of the mothers confronted me and said that while natalie was in the wrong telling this poor child i was her father Calling her my naughter was mocking the situation. I kind of get where she's coming from. Just, I can't help this child. And the honest truth is, playing light of the two-year cycle is as close as I can get to finding peace in this situation. Edit. To answer the repeated question. In my state, the mother has to start the petition for the father to be established and the test to start. There is no instance where a father can start the petition. There was a chance to do this when Emma was born, but the window was exactly one month. I was much too focused on the restraining order, not thinking the paternity angle would bite me in the butt. One last time, to everyone saying, just ask for custody, that'll force a DNA test. Literally can't be done. Been through this enough with a lawyer. I've consulted with other lawyers. There are laws protecting children, and a lot of them exist for good reason. I'll explain it the way my lawyer explained it. Imagine there's a woman that run from an abusive ex. She finds out after she escaped she's pregnant. She gives birth, never puts the ex on the birth certificate, never tries to file for support because she wants to get as far away from him as possible. He finds out years later and tries to rope her back in by using the child as leverage. She can just say no and the state has to let it go. 
There is, however, a provision if the father was involved enough to know when the birth was that he could submit his DNA to the state within 31 days of the birth as a potential father. But that time has long passed. The laws designed this way on purpose. In the eyes of the family court, I am a random person and I was never claimed to Emma. If you think the state wants all children to be claimed by fathers and will gladly submit any DNA test whenever any potential father shows up, find a random single mum. Call the family court and say you want to claim her child. I'm tired of everyone acting like all I needed to do was file out one sheet of paper and this nightmare would end. Please, just call a lawyer for a free consultation or post on a legal advice and ask them. It doesn't work that way. So there were some relevant comments with replies from the OP. Zulu Mad said, what really bothers me here is that a restraining order was in place, but Emma was confident enough to know she was approaching the right kid. Madness says, not the arsehole here. At some point it becomes draining and the little girl is going to need some serious therapy after everything is said and done. Why don't you go to the courthouse and make her do one so it can come to an end? Opie says, because Natalie does not consent to it. And she said, not seeking any sort of court-ordered support. So the court just shrugs and says, get a protective order. Buzz Carrot says, you could get a court-ordered DNA test. Her claims are slanderous. You could take her to court to prove paternity. Opie says, Natalie has long since stopped calling me out for being a deadbeat online. She prefers to show up in person, asking if I want to meet our daughter. The last time the cops confronted her about this, she claims that she only wanted me to act as a paternal father figure to her child. It really depends on the cops that show up. Apple says, not the arsehole. I can understand why someone would think that this is callous, but it's your business and you've every right to use humor to try to deal with it. Don't say that to Emma, considering that she believes your mum, that would be pretty rude. Now the burning question, how did she find Henry while he was on a field trip? Opie says, we suspect Natalie befriended a mum at school and got a class schedule then dropped Emma off at the zoo to be with her brother. Since we are unrelated, I have no idea what school Emma goes to or who Natalie's friends are. We are being very reactive to the situation, but because there are children involved, my lawyer said that that's the best we can do and any type of investigation into Natalie beyond where to send legal paperwork could make it seem like mutual contact and hurt any future restraining orders. C. Still says, I feel sorry for Emma because she's been brainwashed by her mother and that's all she knows. She's innocent in this, yet her world and her sense of identity seems likely to come apart one day. It must be a lie, not just because of the timing, but because the DNA test is such an easy and obvious way to prove if she's telling the truth. Opie says the offer stays open until Emma turns 18. If she wants to contact me after she turns 18, will offer Emma herself the DNA test and, depending on the results, act accordingly. And I felt like that the last comment as well, because like the comment said, this is all Emma knows and she's, con and she's convinced that she's got a brother. So she's being messed with in her mind at the same time, which I just find heartbreaking. And with the OP and the constant harassment when, you know, it could be so easily proved by her if she just accepted this test, but she refuses to do so and then and then OP's having to deal with these two year restraining orders it's it's a I find that incredible like after you've done it time and time again that they don't just look at this and say oh, all right let's absolutely make this permanent I find that wild but OP comes in with an update and says got off the phone with my attorney we have a preliminary hearing on the new restraining order this week will most likely be issued a temporary restraining order and then after that another hearing for the permanent restraining order. CPS is investigating Natalie and Emma's living situation. The teacher's report held a lot of weight and my lawyer thinks that this might actually be a way to end the madness now. In family court for minors, there exists something that's like a temporary court appointed guardian. I think the term is guardian ad litem, who is only a guardian for legal purposes and procedures and decisions of such, including for medical. If the family court appoints such for Emma, we can ask this temporary guardian for the DNA test. Get this put to ground. The madness might actually have an ending in sight. Adding here, I feel like I need to explain the relationship I had with Natalie all those years ago. When I got back from my two month assignments, I was already dead set on breaking up with her. Her, oh wait, I'm pregnant, was never going to make me marry her. 
In fact, he doubted she was pregnant for several weeks. The last year of our relationship, several red flags appeared in her behavior, ranging from demanding I check in with her while at work, only hang out with friends with her present, extreme bouts of jealousy if I ever seemed too friendly with women, including waitresses. I was in a line of work that demanded me being away for long stints, which she hated, but also kept me out of her reach for long periods of time. I think it was halfway through that last year I realized that when I was away, I did not miss her. In fact, I was relieved to plop into a cot and fall asleep after long hours of work without thinking about her. When the pregnancy turned out to be real, it made it clear that with a paternity test, I would pay support, split custody, and be a co-parent and nothing more. She wanted me to be her husband, no question asked. No test, just pure blind faith and devotion to her and the child. The test, she insisted, was insulting. There was never going to be a relationship and there was no relationship to salvage with Natalie. On the advice of the first attorney I hired, the deal was no test, no contact. Now, we have a further update in a moment, which is a court update, but the crown and anchor says, that poor girl. She'd grow up either believing OP to be a deadbeat dad or she'd grow up knowing the truth and knowing that her mum is trying to game the system and get money from a guy that is not the father of her child. Either way, she's going to have a lot of stuff to work out in therapy one day. Frankly, I can't believe OP does not have any legal recourse to force a paternity test. You'd think there'd be one judge who was so annoyed with the constant restraining orders that he would have ordered a paternity test to rid the court system of this bullshit. Dizzy Eyes replies saying, also, that mum has a serious mental health struggle. She's kept this going for 15 years. Man in Black says, she only has to win concession once to get child support garnished and start getting his wages garnished. That's why she's doing it. She thinks she'd get a payout for back child support and other benefits of his military pay and pension, insurance, etc. OP replies saying, this angle is actually very likely. I'll bring this up with my lawyer. Also, good guess on the military pension. Summer Oracle says, I'm surprised you can't sue her for harassment or potentially defamation. Sounds like she's now putting your actual child at risk as well as escalating overall. Hopefully, she doesn't start resulting to more dangerous tactics, but you may want to look into further protections if possible. Opie says, This bit of harassment with a CPS report and the new restraining order should, if we are lucky, be the kill shot we need. Another commenter says all you had to do was call the police when she violated the restraining order. That would have nailed her flaps to the wall, full stop. You want peace? Don't get a useless restraining order. Have police enforce that shit. That lunatic is no match for the police. Opie replies saying she never violates the restraining orders. She harasses until one is issued. That's why we issue them, and get peace. The commenter replied saying then it works for the entire duration of the restraining order. Not even a hint of contact. OP replies the first two times she broke the restraining order and was punished accordingly. After that, she waited out until the restraining order expired. And there was a downvoted comment in the thread which said, I kind of feel like OP's troubles have been karma for how he treated Natalie. Her behavior is totally unhinged for sure, but if he had broken up with her when he first felt like he didn't actually want to be with her, instead of stringing her along for half a year and then basically accusing her of cheating on him, the Norta wouldn't even exist. Essentially, this post is OP admitting that OP knows this child is his, but he's refusing to acknowledge her unless his ex admits the cheating, thereby justifying him leaving her while she was pregnant and trying to reduce his possible financial culpability. OP replies saying, The nature of my job back then meant I was on assignment for weeks at a time, sometimes as long as two months. The amount of time I was home for the half year was small and not all of it consecutive. Also, in relationships, there's moments when you realize you aren't happy. You don't miss the other person, but it's still a bit of a fog you're working yourself through. Half-hearted conversation about where we see ourselves and seeing if there was anything left that I dropped, etc. I'd like to believe I wasn't codependent then, but lack of sleep and lack of stretches of contact made it to where longing for normalcy meant longing for even the bad. Familiarity is a fucking killer. That last trip was one where during it, I steeled myself that when I got home, I was going to break up. Also, we're never going to be in a relationship afterwards. In the past 14 years, all the friends we had as mutuals have worked their way out of my contact list. I don't see her parents. She doesn't see mine. 
who have no social circles in common anymore. What does she have to lose to claiming me as the father and me taking the test? Public stigma? I wouldn't be talking to her friends. She can tell them whatever the fuck she wants. She could brag about how I caved. I wouldn't know. And I most likely wouldn't dispute it if I was the father. No, it sounds like you interpreted a very, very entertaining theory. So Opie came in with what they titled the court update and said the preliminary hearing on the new restraining order went well. Emma and Natalie were there. And we discovered that Emma is currently living with her great grandmother and has a guardian at litem, court appointed guardian on legal matters. My lawyer thinks this means whatever was found in Natalie's home situation warranted removing Emma and potentially severe enough that the great grandmother only has physical custody and the need to appoint a guardian ad litem. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. <laughs> During the hearing, we went through the whole song and dance, the past restraining orders, the whole deal. My lawyer turned to Emma's representative and said that we're willing to submit to a DNA test and put this to bed. Natalie looked like she was having a conniption at that, and her own lawyer urged her to shush. Emma's representative accepted and we were cheek swabbed in the courthouse. A temporary order is now in place, while well, a second hearing is scheduled in the upcoming weeks for the permanent two-year order. The order covers immediate family on both sides, and as I've detailed in the past, Natalie is actually good with following court orders, oddly. We have about four weeks before we have the definitive test results back, but I'm not too worried either way. P.S. There were some people who thought the court couldn't use charity as a cudgel was the father. Well, that's Jim. I haven't talked to Jim in 10 years. But Jim is gay and hated Natalie. He just also happened to be a give the shirt off his back kind of dude. And as long as I knew him, he volunteered at a food pantry. His protest came mostly from naivety, not self-interest. And we're going to be coming to that paternity update in a second. Two comments. So not a doormat says, I'm happy Emma is no longer with Natalie. It's sad her own mother is not capable of taking care of her whatever it takes to save that child. Happy Weekend says, The absolute shock I will have if it turns out she's your daughter. But even then, I completely understand why you've refused anything before a DNA sample was done and everything. No matter what happens, Leon Natalie? Best of luck, dude. Then a month later, the paternity test came in and said, We got the results in late last week, as did Emma's party. I am not the father. Natalie had a major blow up when she heard the news from her grandmother, Sylvia. Emma's currently living at Sylvia's and is out of Natalie's custody. This blow up included a major tantrum on my front lawn, which also violated the temporary restraining order. Natalie has been arrested and Sylvia hasn't bailed her out. Sylvia has communicated to my lawyer that she wanted to give her apologies for bankrolling Natalie's life the past 15 years. I only met Sylvia a few times when I was dating Natalie. And I know Natalie grew up with her. And Sylvia had money, but was never really told the extent of that. Sylvia has communicated via my lawyer, which is technically allowed with a restraining order in place, that both she and Emma want to send me an apology via a letter. I told my lawyer that they were free to write whatever letters they wanted, as long as this was the last communication we had with them. The permanent restraining order is certainly going to be granted now, with the emergency one violated. We still don't know what caused Emma to be removed from Natalie's care, or if Natalie has any underlying issues. If we do get the letters, I will post them. And the top two comments on that one says, I feel for Emma. I mean, look at her maternal influence. But I'm glad that you finally have answers and can hopefully keep Natalie away from you and your family permanently from now on. Paul Negotiation says, hopefully this will end the harassment and even though you knew she wasn't your daughter, now you have the proof. The gym bit confused me and I was like, where did this gym guy come from? But I'm guessing he was the one that was mentioned earlier in the story that was getting on an OP and saying that, you know, and saying that OP should house her. And OP turned around and said, well, if he believes that, then he can do it. And then he dropped it. I think that's where Jim came from. I'm just, I'm incredibly sad for the girl in this because 15 years this has been going on. So God knows what she's been telling her every couple of years when this restraining order ends trying to get her involved with op and then to find out no he's not your dad in the end for her that must be heartbreaking at the same time it just it's incredibly sad and but i'm just glad for op at the same time that now hopefully 
this harassment can be put to bed whether it will in the end it did leave me thinking about i wonder what the the real bio father was like that she hasn't got involved with him at all but anyway now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time always means the absolute world to me so thank you so so much and hopefully i will see you in the next one take care and much love